Several people have noted that I am going to crash my car the first time I drive it. This is because I am using hubs that are intended to be used with axles, but I'm not using axles on the front. The theory is that hubs are designed to hold themselves together with an axle nut torqued to some outrageous torque, squishing it all together. Is this necessary for these hubs? Let's explore. Originally, I had Mustang 2 spindles on this thing. You remember those? They look like this. The spindle goes in the middle and there are tapered roller bearings inside and out. It's all held together with this nut here. You tighten this nut down to a specified torque and that gives the correct preload on the bearings. If this nut comes off, the hub and the wheel come off and you have a bad day. Some later hubs were kind of the opposite of this. The flange that the tire mounts to had kind of a spindle coming out of the back of it. The bearings ride on that and the whole thing is pressed into the upright. You can service these bearings, but you need a hydraulic press, and if you want to make sure it's done right, you need special tools with the correct diameter to make sure everything is square. A later generation of hubs bolt onto the upright instead of pressing into it. They kind of look like this, but the earlier ones would be held together with a little pressed on sleeve, or sometimes just the inner bearing race. The only way to get the correct bearing preload on these is to use an axle nut. But if you don't have the axle bolted in and you go around a corner, the force could pull the hub apart and you have a bad day. I don't think these hubs are designed that way. I think they will stay together just fine without the axle nut, but I also don't want to spend all this time building this car just to lose a wheel and slide face first into a Buffalo Wild Wings hostess table. So I bought a hub that does not have an axle pass through. Tesla uses these on the front of the Model 3s that are only rear wheel drive. They look exactly the same, but without the splines for the axle, and they have this cover pressed on the back. My guess is that these are made in the same way. I'm assuming the flange extends through the middle of the two bearings and some giant press mushrooms out the end of it, holding it all together. I popped the back cap off the hub and it does look the same as the one with the axle pass through, except, you know, without the hole through the middle of it. They both look like they're mushroomed out on the back. There does appear to be a bit less material in this mushroom part, but it's almost the same. This mushrooming is done with a process called orbital forming. They just wiggle a piece of hardened metal on the tube and it turns into a flange that holds it all together. These are both made the same way, and this one seems to work without an axle. So I'm betting that if you can drive without an axle here, you can also drive without an axle here. But just to be extra sure, I cut one in half. And it's assembled just how I expected. The only thing that is not how I expected was that the inner bearing race for this bearing is actually just the center steel piece. It's not a separate part like this one over here. But I don't see any reason why you would need an axle here. The failure mode would be this whole mushroom flange ripping off. By my quick calculations, that would require at least 30,000 pounds of force, which would probably be more than enough to break the three bolts that hold the hub to the upright. It's probably actually stronger than that. I didn't know the alloy of the steel, but since this part is acting as a bearing race for the outer bearing, it's likely a hardened steel that is stronger than your run-of-the-mill alloy. The only thing that makes me think I might be wrong is that Tesla specifies a lot of torque on the axle nut. That would be expected if it was required to hold it all together, but if not, then why the high torque? It could just be because the splines need that clamping load so they're not moving around and wearing on each other. I originally bought the driven hubs because I thought there might be a small but non-zero chance that I would someday put a front motor in this thing. I figured I could save money by not having to buy two new hubs in this possible but unlikely future. Of course, to make sure things work, I had to buy one of the non-driven hubs to compare it to, and also an extra driven hub to cut in half. And in the end, I think I'm just going to buy another non-driven hub and swap out the two driven ones just to be extra sure that I don't have a bad day. I now have a total of seven Tesla hubs, five driven, two not, and also two Mustang two hubs. Anyway, if you'd like more tips on how to save money, hit that subscribe button.